I'm glad I named my book The Not So Subtle Art of Being a Fat Girl because then everyone will hopefully get that like, I'm fat and it's okay to say it. Because <laughs> people gasp. And I'm like, I'm fat. And they're like, don't say that. I'm like, it's okay, chill. I think that it's very important to take the hurt out of words that um, society has kind of placed on us as like bad or negative. I'm not ashamed to say it. I never thought that I would be okay with saying it. Society is so afraid and like almost offended to see someone my size kind of living their life or wearing clothes that they shouldn't. And so um, it's no surprise that I would choose kind of like the most offensive term to describe my body. I saw a lot of people talking about me on social media. They couldn't believe that they saw someone um, that was a size 22 wearing form-fitting bikinis, basically just existing in the world. And I was offending people. And I was like, fuck that. Like, I can wear whatever I want. I tried to think to myself, what do people tell me that I can't wear? So I chose a photo of me in a bikini. I chose something, um, a form-fitting dress. I posted them together. And I said, I'm really tired of society telling me what I should and shouldn't wear. I said, if you agree, post a picture of something that terrifies you or something that makes you feel good and hashtag F your beauty standards. I never would have imagined that it would have taken off the way it did when it made me feel less alone in the community and world. Growing up, it wasn't unusual to be big, but for some reason, I got singled out all the time. I wore whatever I wanted. We also didn't have much money. A lot of my clothes were hand-me-downs. I wish at that time that I could have said like, fuck you, this is my style and this is like who I am, but it shattered me. You would have thought that like little jabs that people were saying on the bus about my size or the way I looked wouldn't bother me, but it did, it affected me a lot. I turned to emotionally eating. I hid in my room a lot. I didn't have much friends. I was getting like death threats at school. They would put them in my mailbox. This was before you could just like, you know, drop it in somebody's DM. <laughs> like these people literally wrote a note and put it in my mailbox. That was like, they went out of their way to just be assholes. Even with my success and being signed three and a half years ago, I'm still the only person my size. I'm still the shortest. I'm still the only tattooed person. They're heavily tattooed my size. And it's incredibly frustrating because I want there to be more visibility. I want there to be more women of color. I want uh, people that identify um, from all kinds of different communities because visibility is so important and it's so important for you to open a magazine or to look online and see someone that looks like you because that's what literally saves lives. If I had someone that looked like me when I was growing up, I probably would have saved myself a lot of her. I probably wouldn't have had as much material to write a book. <laughs> it's baffling that more people haven't caught on to it, but I hope one day they will, so that's why I keep doing it. I do it because I hope people eventually get it.